Welcome to this week's Graffiti Bridge. I have two very interesting guests for you tonight's show. We have Gina Bergamini and Scott Wilson. Gina's a dancer of different styles, belly dancing, modern dancing, and Scott's, a, that's a lute? It's a combination of three Middle East singers. Okay, so you're in for a real treat tonight. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself first, since the show's dedicated to you. Oh, thanks. Uh, well, I've been here in the area teaching mostly for a long time and I've been performing with local groups. I've also performed downtown mostly doing modern and I've and a little bit of jazz and I've been with some of the community theater groups doing all sorts of theater dancing and in the past couple of years I've started belly dancing and I really love it so that's and what, what I'm doing. And what prompted you to get into belly dancing? I just saw um, flyers for a class and decided to take it. See, um, although my base is modern, we are encouraged to take all different forms. I train in ballet. I've also done Israeli folk dancing, uh, a little bit of tap, just to be well-rounded. So I just felt, oh, I've also taken a little bit of African, not enough to really uh, say that I've had a lot of experience in it, but enough to know what it is and to appreciate it. So when I saw that there was a class being offered, I decided to take it, and then I got hooked. Yeah, you found like you really liked it, huh? Oh, I loved it. And you've been doing it now for a couple of years, or? Just a few years, yes. And you perform out in the city and stuff, or? Uh, yes, most recently I've been at Le Figaro Cafe. Uh, it's um, at on Bleecker Street, 184 Bleecker Street. Every Sunday night they have belly dancing. And I dance every couple of weeks. And that's where I met Scott, actually. It and that's our other guest, Scott Wilson. And why don't you tell my um, viewers a little bit about yourself? Very interesting guy, so listen up. <laughs> I'm born in New York City, and I'm related to the famous Serena, who teaches belly dancing in the heart of New York City. And in New York, you can find anything. And at a young age, I grew up, uh, often I went to the 8th Avenue nightclubs uh, in the 30s, where they had a Greek 
uh, Turkish, Arabic, all different cultures, and they had belly dancing and belly dancing. How old were you when you joined this? Uh, was a young? young teenager. Just sneaking into the club type thing and just yes. had a real affinity for the music? Yes, that's where I fell in love with the music and also through Serena. And I fell in love with the oud, which is a round back lute, which is the center instrument on my triple neck here, which is an instrument of my own invention. And this instrument combines three different, or actually four different Middle Eastern instruments. The bottom one is a half Greek, half Turkish saz bazooki instrument. It has quarter tone frets, the frets in between notes, which give it the Middle Eastern sound and make it more like a Turkish saz. And again, the middle instrument is an oud, Arabic oud. <laughs> On the top, I just have a guitar. The oud, as I said, is my main instrument. And I designed and created this instrument. It's the only one like it in the world. And I'm the only one who plays I it. I noticed that that obviously has pickups in it. Now, like, um, this the more traditional instruments don't have the pickups in it? They don't. Yeah, I have an acoustic, that you added. acoustic model, but this one is my more portable electric model. But it sounds very uh, natural. In fact, the oud part of it is a hollowed body oud with a uh, contact pickup inside. The other two are electri electrified. Now, do you play solo by yourself, or do you play with dancers all the time, or is it a little bit of both? Or I work with a, a group. Uh, drums, clarinet, and one of my favorite dancers to play for is Gina. Oh, okay. So uh, we work at the Figaro and uh, do other, we're available for private parties and weddings and all kinds of events. And if you want later, we can flash a phone number or an email or something if you want to have people contact you through that. Sure. Also, I just came out with my second CD, um, which features my triple neck instrument, has belly dance shows on it. It's also interactive. It has uh, movies of, um, for Mac and PC of teaching belly dance and some historical shows on it. So uh, that's one of my more recent accomplishments. Now, how long have you been performing together, you guys? What is it now? <laughs> a long like a time. day, <laughs> they showed up. As a matter of fact, I they were. <laughs> I, I just got them off the street in the city, and we just came up. But that's right. That's the bridge for you. <laughs> we go back. <laughs> <laughs> so w can talk about a little bit the relationship they have, like when you're dancing and you know someone like Scott's playing the music. Does it develop a chemistry or? Uh, you know what yes. I'm yeah, yes. Um, Actually, it's, it's really a good training for me since I come from a different dance background where the music is often recorded already uh, because um, it's very hard That's to get live music That's when you're talking about in the modern dance and the ballet? Uh, yes. Uh, most of the time I'm working with recorded music. So it's always the same every time. So this has been a real pleasure is to work with a live musician. Uh, to really, I really have to listen to <laughs> what's going on. Is that it's because it's not so routine? Is it spontaneous there's flowing? A, there's a set format, but within each song, there's uh, certainly a lot of interplay between the There's the some dancer improvisation in there, and, the and you guys feed off each other. Like, is it kind of yes. like you, like kind of like sense where she's going, and yes, and vice yes, versa. Absolutely. But generally, well, that's very interesting. She knows that the first opening will be fast, and then there'll be a slow veil part and then a medium tempo that's exciting. You kind of choreograph this before you go on before a performance? I mean, do you talk about it, like we're going to open we up a fast it, number? Yeah. Or, or tonight it's a slow it. thing? or Right. We have a conversation. And then just kind of like, is it always, it's not always the same, right? Do you always do, do you vary it, or is it like a same format type of thing? You know, trying to get out, like, say, like, if you talk like to like jazz musicians, they don't know. It's like where their head's at in the moment. You know what I'm saying? Do the overall format is is has a certain uh, pacing that has a uh, 
I would just say predictability, but it, it builds an excitement. She knows when I'm going to go to a fast song or to you a You can slow kind of part. anticipate that? Yes. Yeah. From that, yeah, that must be pretty cool. But within each song, there's a, a certain amount of communication. So usually the song will start and then go into an improvisation part in the middle of the s songs. I play mostly traditional pop, Turkish, and Arabic songs. Uh, the type of songs that you walk away humming the melody. So you do, you go, you try to emphasize stuff. melody? Yeah. Stuff like that? Now, um, what kind of people have come to these shows? What kind of crowd is it? You know what I'm saying? Is it diverse? I would or say would diverse to a lot all of young different all kinds. different kinds of people. Of course, living in New York and everything, you have all kinds of, of people. But New York audiences are some of the most appreciative because they're so mixed culturally, ethnically. They're very appreciative and uh, they're a great audience in New York. Now, do you find like um, like traditionalists coming in because, like, say, someone from an Arab background, and how do they react to you playing cement? You know what I'm saying? To me personally, they get very excited seeing an American playing cement. Oh, okay. That's what I was trying to get at. That were popular maybe 30, 40 years ago. I know songs going back. It's sort of like. And we that's get from your mother's background, right? Yeah. Yeah, going after that. So we you're steeped in the soul culture. Yes, yeah, I am. Yeah, very much. Okay. I've been to uh, Turkey. 12 times. 12 times. I'm going a 13th time in May, and I'm a Turkish language major at NYU. So besides the music, I study the language and the culture. That's awesome. So you're like totally immersed into it. Pretty much so, yeah. <laughs> and that must be interesting for you to work with and have someone like that backing you, right? Absolutely. I'm learning quite a lot. <laughs> Scott's my tutor. <laughs> no, so when you're you know, preparing it to like your... Um, you know, your modern dancing and the mm -hmm. ballet, it's more of a smaller club, too, where you play these things, right? Oh, yes, that was the biggest shock of my life, was to uh, learn how to perform in a tight space, because I'm used to huge right, amounts Right, so the stage and stuff from the ballet and the modern dance. So what was that like, like getting used to that? I'm still learning. Still learning uh, it's fun. Puppet. I mean, it's, it's not huge movement. Uh, I have done choreographed pieces um, for the stage that does use some bigger movement um, and bigger patterns. You know, we have more dancers um, sometimes. And so we have the luxury of space. But it, I don't think it's about that. I think it's, it is smaller movement. It draws people into you rather than project out. So that's something I, need to, uh, I needed to learn and to keep learning is how to use the space and how to bring people in. Do you find that feeding, uh, like, do you feed off the energy of having people so close and, like, right there in the interaction? Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, I can bring... up on the stage more detached? Uh, it's a little more personal, yes. yes. It's definitely more personal. I can, I can perform right to you or right to the people at your table. Um, I can invite you to dance with me. Oh, you get people, <laughs> yeah, you, you get people up dancing, huh? Yes. Yeah. Put them on the spot. Audience participation. Oh, yes, it, it's a lot of fun. Sometimes you can have everyone up dancing. Oh yeah, get everyone going. Room. I can imagine that must be kind of cool, huh? It's good energy. Yes, in this country, the dancers draw upon the best of the entire Middle East. They'll take bits and pieces of whatever's the best of the dance in the different Middle Eastern so countries. So different. So yeah. So there's different type of like um dancing as different regions in the Arab world. Yes. From what you're saying. Uh, but in this country, we have the option of of picking and choosing the best of uh, dances, the best of the music, and uh, it's more, uh, dancers put more into their costumes, I think, some of them, and more into the steps and everything in this country. In some of the other countries, uh, the dance isn't re is regarded as highly as it is. So what country. you're saying, the last time something about costume, this is more an American thing for show, or? I think this is more of a theatrical costume. So they don't dress up as much in the Arab world when they're dancing, or do they, or? Uh, uh, some of them do, but there's uh, certain folk things where they don't dress up, and some of those are pleasant to watch, but I'd much rather watch the American version of the Middle Eastern dance. 
more preferable to you? And how far back does dancing go in the Arab world? Is it something that's like centuries and centuries and centuries, or is it just more I'm of an sure evolution? I'm sure it goes back to the dawn of time. Civilization probably grew out of some part of the Middle East, and uh, it, the dance is a very feminine dance that's usually done by a woman as a solo dance, and uh, it's a very feminine dance that, that men do more of a folk version of it. They'll dance with a cane or a prop or something, but women are, it's a woman's art in that way. And that leads us to having you dancing, huh? I'm sorry? That leads us to having you dance and stuff, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so um, why don't we get some dancing and some music done? Terrific. Okay. Great. Cool. How was that? <laughs>